Workshops also call attention to the use of audiovisual methods, appealing to the eyes as well as the ears for effective teaching. Teachers and youth sponsors are in a strategic position to teach missions, and leadership training workshops show them how. Drama is a natural tool in teaching children and youth when it is used under expert guidance. A workshop in music and development of choirs of all age groups is a great help not only in the educational program of the church, but in its worship as well. The use of books is vital to teaching and a library workshop teaches the most effective use of library techniques. The philosophy of our Christian Education Department is that we never stop learning and the golden opportunities of the later years of life can be fruitful and fulfilling in an organized educational ministry. What is the purpose of teaching? Is it to inflate the ego or learning merely for the sake of having knowledge? No, it is committed to faithful people so they will be able to teach others also, as in the case of these camp counselors. The CYF, or Conference Youth Fellowship, has an active program in the district directed by the CYF cabinet, which meets regularly to plan and implement the youth activities. Youth officers and sponsors also need training, and teams of youth leaders hold training sessions like this one in Arizona. Lest anyone think that youth work is merely programming for entertainment, we emphasize that our youth are participators, not spectators. This caravan of youth surveyed the community of Agura to find prospects for our new extension church in that new community. Teaching involves club work for boys and girls, emphasizing Christian Service Brigade and Girls Missionary Guild as effective programs for involving active children and youth in constructive activity. Our teaching program reaches across the continent to Bethel College in scholarships to worthy students with recognized leadership. The audiovisual department is not large, but it multiplies itself in the district through a sharing program in which churches make their film strips and materials available to one another. This extensive Christian education ministry is directed by the Board of Christian Education elected by delegates in annual sessions of the Southwest Baptist Conference. The E in our teamwork stands for Extension. Reverend Fred Prinzing, Director of Church Extension, studies population trends and community growth with a view to locating new conference churches in strategic areas for an effective ministry. This community of Walnut now has a testimony of the gospel because of an extension church. Agoura, California, located on the county line between Los Angeles and Ventura counties, is now being reached by our new conference church. Lake Havasu City, Arizona, is growing out of the desert, one of those miracle cities of the southwest, and our testimony is there. At one time, these wild donkeys, descendants of animals abandoned by prospectors years ago, congregated on the desert. Now a group of Christians congregate in the elementary school, waiting for the completion of their church building. This congregation, officially recognized and affiliated with the Southwest Baptist Conference, is the Lake Havasu Baptist Church and is now ready to minister to the thousands of anticipated people who will be moving to that city and the tens of thousands who will visit its recreational wonderland. As new works are started, special problems arise, and it is necessary for the pastors of these extension churches to meet for counsel and mutual encouragement. The Church Extension Board is looking for the most promising locations for new churches. And although here it looks as though they are standing around with their hands in their pockets, they have really been very aggressive in their work of seeking new areas for churches. 
The A in our teamwork is for administration. This is directed by Reverend Roger Youngquist, the Executive Secretary. Most of the administrative work is done in this attractive office building constructed in cooperation with the Conservative Baptists at 925 North Sunset Avenue in West Covina, California. Mrs. Lorraine Gates recently was employed as our secretary. A never-ending stream of correspondence and information to all members of the team is necessary to keep the work correlated and efficient. Probably the largest single responsibility of the Executive Secretary's office is the promotion of the budget, so all aspects of the work can continue. To keep this need before our churches, promotional materials are prepared to tell the story. Churches need pastors, and the Executive Secretary meets with the pulpit committees to give counsel and secure references on qualified candidates to ensure the securing of reliable, godly men for our pulpits. Where can a pastor go when he has problems? Our administrative staff tries to be available to all of our pastors as needed. Regular meetings in the areas of the district, coupled with seminars and pastors' retreats, afford an opportunity for pastors and Christian workers to share ideas and pray together. The Executive Secretary works with the Trustee Board, also elected by the conference in annual session, in administering the policies and program of the district. A growing area of administrative responsibility is the foundation, established for the purpose of processing the donations of real estate, stocks, bonds, and legacies to Christian work. Through such a vehicle, it is made more possible to magnify Christ by life or by death, by making gifts of property or by making a Christian will in which God's work is remembered. Teaching, extension, administration, in a real sense, all of this is missionary activity, but the M means missions in a special sense as directed by our Missionary Projects Commission. Lauren Long is our flying missionary in Baja, California, and one of the best-known members of our team of missionaries. His ministry is evangelistic, with a view to establishing and encouraging the self-supporting indigenous church in Mexico. However, the physical needs of the populace cannot be ignored. So a clinic has been established to care for the medical and dental problems of the people. Our missionary ministry offers another opportunity for the training of youth, as four caravans each year bring young people into intimate contact with foreign missions through children's meetings, visitation, Bible schools, and evangelistic meetings. Our compound of 90 acres is now being supplied with water by this recently drilled well, which seems almost symbolic of the bringing of the water of life to this area through the gospel. The men behind prison bars are a mission field too, and Reverend Paul Lovick receives support from our Missionary Projects budget to minister to this increasing segment of our society. We have encouraged the support of the work of the Hospital Chaplains Ministry of America, a thoroughly evangelical outreach to hospital patients at a time when they are in most need and they also appreciate spiritual help. The Missionary Projects Commission is now looking back at the inner city with its mixed population, such as the area served by the First Indian Baptist Church of Southgate which has a ministry to American Indians of many tribes who have moved into the Los Angeles area. The Baldwin Hills Church, together with other churches of our district, finds itself in an urban area in need of special programs for its community, and the Southwest Conference views these situations as challenges to be met and mastered by the use of spiritual wisdom and power. 
The Missionary Projects Commission is elected by the conference to direct the wide outreach of our district missions. The W in teamwork stands for willingness, for every team member must possess what is usually called the team spirit, which after all is willingness to participate. Just as our district voluntarily unites with the 18 districts in our Baptist General Conference to give willing cooperation on the international level, and just as almost 700 churches and 100,000 members participate in the Baptist General Conference to accomplish a worldwide missionary program, so more than 60 churches in Southern California and Arizona willingly join in a team under the direction of the Holy Spirit to reach our goals. We would like to visit every one of our churches, but our time is limited, and so we'll take just a quick tour of a representative number of our churches. Moving to the extreme northwest, we have the Trinity Baptist Church of Santa Barbara, California. Then the First Baptist Church of Reseda. The First Baptist Church of La Crescenta. The First Baptist Church of Palmdale, soon to have a sanctuary built next to this Christian education building. The Neighborhood Baptist Church of Covina. The Alondra Baptist Church of Bellflower. And First Baptist Church of Lakewood. The Nutwood Street Baptist Church of Garden Grove. The Warner Avenue Baptist Church of Huntington Beach. And going farther south, the College Avenue Baptist Church of San Diego. And then the church almost on the Mexican border, the Mar Vista Baptist Church of Imperial Beach. The Trinity Baptist Church of Allied Gardens in San Diego. Then moving eastward, we come to the Crestview Baptist Church of Claremont with its first unit completed not too long ago. And the Grace Baptist Church of Riverside. Now there will be just a brief period here where it's necessary to change trays on the projector, and then we'll proceed. If the change of trays was successful, you are now looking at another Crestview Baptist Church, this one in San Bernardino, California. The First Baptist Church of Ukaipa has established itself in the center of that community as a landmark of Christian testimony. The Community Baptist Church of Lake Arrowhead, with its log cabin design, blends beautifully with its surrounding mountain scenery. Calvary Baptist Church of Yucca Valley has its testimony on the high desert. Moving eastward to Arizona, we visit the Elam Baptist Church of Phoenix. And even farther east is the Sun Valley Baptist Church of Scottsdale, Arizona. Our southeasternmost church is Faith Baptist Church of Tucson, Arizona, with its pastor, Fred Pattison. All of these churches, working together, display the willingness in our team. The O in our teamwork is for objectives, for a team must strive for specific goals. Essentially, our objective is that of building bridges but spiritual bridges. You may have heard that Lake Havasu City is also in the bridge building business, planning to rebuild London Bridge, and they're gathering together the pieces of granite in this yard. So far, all they've done is to lay the cornerstone and surround it with a protecting fence. The dead skunk inside the fence may have some significance, but we're not sure what it is. Perhaps someone put it there to show disrespect for the project, or perhaps the skunk just succumbed to progress. But we have been building bridges for many years, bridges to our communities through extension churches. Rancho Bernardo is a community to which we would like to build a bridge soon, as funds are available. The move is on into these new communities. 
And unless we as a conference are on the move too, we may lose sight of our objectives and fail our Lord. We do have objectives in church extension, even though they are quite modest because of the lack of funds. The pattern has been set by our past history. Four of our churches were organized previous to 1940. Seven were organized during the decade of the 40s, 23 during the 50s, and 26 during the 60s. To maintain this kind of growth, we will need to establish 15 new churches by 1975. However, living as we do in the midst of the area of largest population growth in the world, we ought to be doing far more than we have done previously. Just think what an extension church can become. This is the original building of our Bethany Baptist Church of Whittier. In the brief span of its history, it has grown to where it now has this beautiful building, as you see it from Mills Avenue, and as you see it from the parking lot. A significant factor to remember as we build these bridges to these communities is that they become two-way bridges with missionary money and effort coming back from the church to assist in further church extension and missions. We are also building bridges to our youth. Probably our most effective bridge is camping. Our camping objective, as you can see, is to continue at least the annual average increase of 5% or expand it if possible. This year our camp served more than 4,000 persons. And with just ordinary growth, we will minister to well over 6,000 in 1975. But with such an opportunity, we cannot be satisfied with past progress. We must seek more and better bridges to the coming generations. We are hopeful that God may allow us to develop one of the finest camping facilities in the country near this world-famous observatory on Palomar Mountain. It is a lovely wooded area at an ideal elevation for both summer and winter camps. Large meadows make an ideal setting for a camp facility. The master plan has projected a series of lakes on the property with the program centering around the water. The scenic beauty of the property offers unmatched surroundings for an effective camping program. A dedication service on Labor Day was attended by several hundred of our people, but we will need the earnest, constant, prayerful dedication of all of our people if we are to have this project become a realized objective, because only a miracle will make it possible. Not only are we building bridges to our communities and to our youth, but also we are building bridges across the border to Mexico where we are constantly seeking better means of communicating the gospel. The R in our teamwork stands for resources. We have the resource of prayer, not only by our youth, but by all ages, lifting hearts in childlike faith, interceding on behalf of our total team effort. Our women are a valued resource for our work because the Women's Missionary Union maintains a constant concern for the spiritual and missionary aspects of our work. The women also provide material resources as when they purchase this typewriter for one of our extension churches, and also a duplicator for attractive and effective publicity. The men of our district have also been an enthusiastic and fruitful resource for our work. Their officers have developed programs geared to missionary outreach too. Hymnals are provided for extension churches. Here Cecil Emil, confined to a wheelchair because of multiple sclerosis, examines one of the hymnals given to the Lake Havasu Baptist Church. The Bethel Baptist Church of La Habra was able to complete the paving of its parking lot because of a loan from the Buck a Month Club, another effective part of the men's work. Our young people are probably one of our greatest resources, 
and their eager service is an important part of our team's potential in our ministry in Baja, California. There are times when we discover resources we didn't even know about, as when Faith Baptist Church of Corona heard that the Lake Havasu City Church needed a communion set and sent them this one on their own, in a loving gesture across the state line. Our financial resources come from our churches through regular budget designations. We'll have to confess that when we saw this trailer bank set up temporarily in Walnut, California, there was a strong temptation to hitch up to it and bring it over to the conference office so we could just help ourselves. But that just isn't done. We depend upon the budgets of the churches for our support. Some idea of our need for financial resources can be obtained from the awesome cost of church extension. If we are to reach our goal of 75 churches by 1975, we will need about $165,000 per church, according to present costs. This means a total investment of $2,475,000 in the next six years. Most of this, or $2,250,000, would be needed in loans from individuals through our loan and revolving funds or through commercial loans, so this would eventually be paid back by the churches. However, $225,000 would be direct pastoral salary subsidy, and this must be raised in budget funds. This means an average annual budget of over $40,000, whereas our present budget allows for a little over $30,000 for this purpose. Our total budget for this fiscal year for all of our program is $119,340. This sounds like a lot of money, and it is. But actually, it means only $7 for each conference church member in our district. This is the amount we need to reach our objectives as a team. The K in our teamwork stands for knowledge. The clarion gives knowledge of our activities and opportunities for service. Other literature calls attention to the many ways in which our people can contribute to various aspects of our district work. Knowledge of opportunities for training and development of skills is important to equip the team for maximum efficiency. We try to let everyone know of our excellent camping program and the wide span of age groups served by one of the most comprehensive camping schedules available anywhere. Area meetings give occasion for sharing the conference story and the asking of questions for mutual increase of knowledge. Missionary rallies are designed to share the knowledge not only of district missions, but our worldwide missionary work through the Baptist General Conference. Really, this is why we're sharing this presentation with you right now, so you will know your part on this team. We want you to know about the many hours spent by members of boards and committees to plan and promote the overall objectives of the Southwest Baptist Conference. We want you to know about young couples who are willing to give themselves in the Christian ministry, often at low salaries, to share the Word of God in our new churches, and people who are eager to search the Scriptures together in home Bible studies and prayer meetings, and who are willing to band together in a local church to serve God in their own community. People who represent us as the missionaries of the gospel, making disciples, baptizing, and teaching, just as Jesus commissioned us to do. This could be called Sunrise Over Lake Havasu, representing the dawn of a conference ministry there. But it's actually the sunset, and we're reminded of the scripture, The night cometh when no man can work. We must keep the lights along the shore. This is assigned to our team, and we need you on our team, a team of over 60 churches and more than 17,000 members, 
united by the Spirit of God to do a job too big for us, but not too big for God and us. We're counting on you. It takes teamwork.